I'd like to clear up some misconceptions when it comes to learning things by ear, especially when it comes to the banjo. This isn't a lesson per se, but when I ask people what they'd like me to cover in these more casual vlog type videos, it ends up being a lot of things that could be lessons and actually will be lessons in the future, entire series of lessons. But I can't really do that right now, but what I can do is shed some light on some things that I think people think are a little bit more complicated or mysterious about ear training. And one of those is just what it is that we're expected to do when it comes to learning things by ear. That actually can mean a lot of different things. For some people, that just means learning the chords to a song or finding a melody on your instrument and coming up with your own arrangement of a song. And for some people, it means transcribing note for note exactly what somebody else played on a recording. And actually, those things kind of require different skills, all under the umbrella of ear training and learning by ear, but they're not really the same, and so you can't really practice them exactly the same way. So without going really in depth, right now, how can I give you some practical information that you can start using right now to hopefully hold you over until those lessons are actually available? Well, the first thing is to realize that this is actually something that you can already do, just in a kind of different way than you might think. If I asked you right now to sing Happy Birthday, I bet you could do it. And I bet it would sound like Happy Birthday, you'd sing all the right words, and somebody else would listen to it and say, yeah, that's Happy Birthday, I know that one. Well, actually, that's something that you learned by ear. I doubt anyone ever had to tell you what notes and words to sing. You've just heard it many, many times, and you've absorbed it over a long period of time. But it's not just that. It's also that the instrument that you're using to play Happy Birthday, your voice, is one that you're really, really familiar with. Literally since the moment that you came into existence, you've been using that instrument, your voice, for hours a day. You've actually built up a considerable amount of technique and control on that instrument. So it's not that surprising that you can just hear something and sing it. You might not be really good at it, you might not be a really great singer, I'm not, but it's easier usually than it is with other instruments that you don't really have any experience with. So my first piece of advice is to become as familiar as you possibly can with whatever instrument you're using to learn something by ear. That could mean learning chords and scales and the names of the notes, anything you can do to understand what's gonna happen when you play a certain note on the banjo and what that's gonna sound like. And honestly, a good way to do this is just to learn things in a different way, not learning them by ear, but really deeply thinking about and listening to what it is that you're playing. So if you learn something through a book or tablature or a video, you can still learn it without using your ear and then use your ear to understand what it is that you're playing. So that if, for instance, you learn something that has the chords G, C, and D, and you get really comfortable with what the sound of that is, it's gonna be a lot easier to hear when something else uses those chords because you're so familiar with what they sound like. And that kind of leads me into the next part of this, which is that none of this happens in a vacuum. No one's ever gonna expect you to be able to hear something without any frame of reference whatsoever, unless you have perfect pitch. If you have perfect pitch, then you probably don't need to be watching this video, but if you're like most of us who don't have perfect pitch, then there's always some reference that you're using to understand what it is that you're hearing. And that reference can take a lot of different forms. It could either be something like, well, I know that the first chord is G, so when I hear the second chord, I can try chords that I know tend to work with G and then using your ear, you'll find one that fits. It's not so much that you hear this and then you immediately just know what it is. You're generally using information that you already have, just information you've stored from learning other things and using that as a reference to find where you might wanna guess for some of this stuff using your ear. Your ear's gonna tell you if you're right or wrong, but you've got other information that's gonna point you in the right direction. The better you get at it, the less of a reference you need, but you should use whatever reference you have to get the information as quickly as possible, especially if you're in a situation like a jam or a gig where just playing the right thing is actually more important than feeling really good about figuring it out just by ear. You know, the song could have ended by the time you figure out what the first note is, but hooray for you, you figured it out. Now, especially when it comes to things like melodies or transcribing things that other people have played, your ability to hear something and even sing something is so huge in terms of being able to put it on the instrument. Generally, making things just happen on the instrument is a little rare. It's more like you hear it and then you translate it into something on the instrument. The more comfortable you get with the instrument, it can start to feel like you're just there, you just have it on the instrument. But when it takes some time to think about it, it's really more about whether or not you can hear it and really imagine what that sound is and hopefully even sing it 
and then put it on the banjo. But you have to be really secure in the way that you actually hear this stuff. It can't be vague, it has to be really concrete, which means you might have to listen to something over and over and over again. I know speaking from experience, there have been times when I've listened to one note for hours. There's just been one note that I haven't been able to find because the recording quality isn't great or something's really fast or it's not exactly clear what's being played or maybe there's a couple notes being played at one time and I wanna be sure that one of those is correct. And I've spent a lot of time on that and eventually you will hear it. It gets in your brain and it's all you can think about and it's all you can hear and you just know when it's right. So when you find the instrument, you say, yeah, that's it. If we take that example of happy birthday again, if I can sing that, if I can sing that and really clearly hear it, then I can probably find it on my instrument. Cause I can sing happy birthday to you. Again, not a great singer, but those are the notes to happy birthday because I'm really familiar with that melody. So I can sing more or less the right notes. If I can do that, I can find it here. So if I sing just that first word, happy, there are 12 options for what that note could be. That's all there are, right? 12 notes. So if I go, happy, 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 happy. What do you know? That's it. It might take you longer than that. It might take a lot longer than that, but that's fine because that's the process. The more you do it, the faster it's gonna be. And the same thing goes for chords. If I'm listening to a recording and I hear this, well, it could either be one of 12 major chords or 12 minor chords, or yeah, 12 diminished or augmented chords or all sorts of other crazy things. But if you're listening to bluegrass, it's probably one of 12 major or minor chords. So you could try anything between G and G major and G and G minor, and eventually something's gonna sound like it feels right. I don't necessarily wanna just set you off on that path and say, go ahead and do that and it should go fine because actually it's pretty challenging. And yeah, in lessons that I'm gonna make in the future, there'll be more detailed explanations and smaller steps that you can take. But for now, that really is a huge part of the process. So I know that's not the full lesson that people want about learning things by ear and that's coming, but hopefully for now, you can use some of those skills like listening deeply, singing melodies that you know, getting really familiar with your instrument and learning those melodies on your instrument, even if it takes a really long time and it's really hard. Like a lot of things, it's mostly about the work that you're going to put in and your willingness to put up with how it feels when that doesn't necessarily go the way that you want it to. So work hard and be nice to yourself when it doesn't go the way that you want it to go. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. I'll see you next time.